bringing old ships to life. Hello everybody, it's Jamie as you all well know now and welcome back to a new video. Now today we'll be talking about the famous Q-Narder, the RMS Coronia from the 1950s. So let's of course first begin with the specifics. Now the Coronia was ordered for the Cunard White Star Line and was built by John Brown and Company Limited. The ship measured 209.7 meters long, 27.8 meters wide and had a draft of 14.2 meters. She was fitted with two steam turbines and generated a ship horsepower of 35,000, being able to reach a top speed of 22 knots, a totaling a gross tonnage of 34.274 gross registered tons. Now the Coronia was intended to be the fleet mate to the Mauritania, now this being the Mauritania of 1938. And the ship was to be similar in size and speed to the Mauritania. However, the company executives thought that three ships on the transatlantic service was enough and needed a ship primarily for cruising. And so the Corania was reimagined to how she was. Now, the ship was launched on 30 October 1947. Now, what I found quite funny when I was doing my research is that uh, me, myself, I was born on 31 October. So this ship was launched one day before my birthday. So I found that quite interesting and funny at the same time. But the Coronia entered service in early January 1949 making a first voyage as a passenger liner from Southampton to New York. The ship had a different way of operation, as she would have two classes on the transatlantic run, first and cabin. However, when cruising, there would only be a single cruising class. Now the company wanted the ship to stand out from the rest of the fleet and the world, being painted with a four-colored green hull, which gave her the iconic image as the green goddess, and her most iconic feature being her large funnel. Her funnel was so big that it's been rumored that her funnel would create drag, making it difficult to steer the ship. Coronia's biggest milestone was her first world cruise, which took place after two more transatlantic voyages and the cruise took a total of 111 days. Cunard made the decision that the Coronia would only make transatlantic voyages during the months of August and September and the rest of the year was dedicated to cruising. Not long after this change while the ship was making her first voyage, she grounded near Egypt, while transiting through the Suez, but she was undamaged. She would make her highlight cruise in May 53, when she embarked on her coronation cruise around Africa and Scandinavia, and would make it back in time for Princess Elizabeth's coronation. She would run smoothly and would be quite popular, receiving the nickname Green Goddess. Coronia's downfall would occur when on April the 13th, 1958, while departing the Yokohama Harbor, heavy winds picked up and the massive ship and their crew had spotted a naval tug and attempted to steer clear of its path. However, in doing so, the ship came in the path of the Yokohama Lighthouse, which was constructed in 1898, and the crew hastily tried to avoid this, but it was futile. 
the bow of the ship crashed into the base of the lighthouse, and the bow of the ship crumbled to the top of the lighthouse, causing it to crash down below. Coronia was then arrested and anchored outside the harbor, cancelling her cruise. Luckily, no one was injured, but the ship was seriously damaged. The US Navy allowed Cunard to use their naval dry dock based in, I will butcher the name, Yokosuka, and was towed by the tug she tried to avoid. Coronia's autumn cruises had been cancelled too, as political tensions in the Middle East rose, but she continued to do her world cruises through 1959 and would make her last few transatlantic arrivals and departures to and from New York, as the dawn of jet airlines started taking over the market. And so, the remainder of her career was almost exclusively cruising, and was to be used as a fill-in for when one of the two larger Queen Mary or Elizabeth were in dry dock. The turn of the 1960s didn't go so well for the Coronia, as during her annual overhaul, when over 150 painters walked out on strike in a pay and working condition dispute. This led to only part of her starboard side being recoated. The port side having been left with red lead patches and despite the barely repainted ship, Coronia left for Liverpool on schedule on December the 22nd, 1959, and wouldn't depart until January the 2nd, 1960, as her own crew were given the task of completing the paint job. This went on to the point where floodlights were used during the nights to complete the work. As the 60s continued and more shipping lines began building their own purpose-built cruise ships, which were in fact more modern and luxurious, the Coronia continued to cruise, despite the new and rapid changes. And this would change in 1962, when Cunard had their 24-year-old Martania repainted with Coronia's iconic green hull, and two other ships that were on the Canadian service were withdrawn and refitted and renamed to the Franconia and Carmania, with the two receiving the cruising green colors. Jumping ahead in time, in 1965, the Cunard makes a bold decision and takes the Coronia out of service for 10 weeks to be refitted with over 1.200 men working at a time. The ship was giving a brand new Lido deck and the extension of her sun deck allowing for a larger pool. Eight new suites, a former restaurant was gutted to make room for a new lounge and an expansion of an older lounge. However, despite Cunard spending the equivalent of $4.14 million today refitting the Coronia, the 1966 seamen strike crashing hard and Cunard struggling to keep their goddess alive, they made the hard decision to pull her out of service in November 1967 and shortened her cruise sailing to New York, then sailing back to England empty. In June 1968, a new buyer was announced, the Panamanian and American-owned company Starline, and bought the ship with a strict understanding that the ship would not commercially sail to a British port. And on July the 25th, 1968, the Coronia, now renamed the Columbia, sailed out to Greece to be refitted. 
However, the refit saw issues with the engines and the ship couldn't be brought into service until February 1969. Her new paint was completely a white hull with a blue band running across the hull and her funnels were painted in gold with a black top. However, the gold paint was not a good color of choice and by the time the ship was again renamed Caribia and in New York on a maiden voyage, her funnel appeared rusted-like. On March the 5th, 1969, an explosion occurred aboard the ship, which resulted in one crew member's death, and the ship lost power. Despite the emergency systems that should be on board, it's been speculated that the crew failed to send out distress signals and the ship proceeded to drift for 20 hours before she was able to get steam and sail back to port. Once arriving back in St. Thomas, before having brief repairs done and sailed back to New York, but not at her pier. Rather, she was anchored at the bay possibly to avoid inspections by maritime officers. After many lawsuits and claims as well as a failed fundraiser to restore the Caribia for cruising, she was sold for scrap. On April the 27th, 1974, without any sort of news or announcement, the Caribia was towed out of New York by a German tug bound for Thailand for demolition. A voyage that would take around a hundred days. But before doing so, any of her fittings that could be were stripped and sold off for action around a month or two after the ship had left. During the voyage, the tug's engines had failed, causing the crew to cut the lines loose sending the Caribbean adrift once more and soon grounded on rocks near the entrance to Apra Harbor. In June 1975, a Japanese-based company was contracted to dismantle the wreckage and this would last for two years. A terrible end to the goddess. So at the end, what did we learn of the Armas Coronia? She was an amazing ship, but had such a sad, tragic end to her life. Uh, right here we can see the, the Coronia under the Cunard management. This is the ship we all know. This is the ship Coronia, the ship that we love, the green goddess, the Cunard queen. Uh, what we also saw in this video is that Cunard loved her so much. They tried to keep her up to date by um, fixing her, by adding new stuff, but sadly it didn't work. And then we see her right here under the Starline management. And here we see how this company disregarded the ship completely. How they mistreat, mistreated her. It hurts me. It hurts me really and I don't want this video to end on the rave but of course I have my own opinion and it just hurts me to see how a ship can go from this to this. It, it, it hurts me really. A ship should be handled with love, with care and not end up in such a state. Um, but that's the end of my rave. Guys I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly love making it. I know it's a long video. But there is just so much to this story of this fine ship. Um, I quickly also want to take a time to thank you all so much. We have reached a new milestone. 700 subscribers. 713 to be exact. I'm just blown away every time if we hit a new milestone. I'm blown every time when I see a new subscriber. I'm blown away every time when I see your comments because it just means so much to me and I am blown away <laughs> again blown away so much.
by how many of you guys like my content. I never thought that I would have such an audience like you guys. It really means so much to me. You can't imagine. I can't describe it in words. Um, I quickly want to also take a time to thank uh, some people who have helped me along this voyage so far. Skybeds, you moon is Skybeds. Thank you, buddy, for all the help that you have done, all the help you gave me. I wouldn't be here without your help, your advice. And um, I value our friendship so much. And secondly, I want to thank an other person who has helped me very much. And his name is Swanky, uh, or, us, or as I call him, Louis. Thank you, Louis, so much also for what you have done for me, helping me make some of the most beautiful thumbnails I've ever seen. Um, thank you very much. Also, like Skybats, I value our friendship so much. It means so much to me. And finally, thank you to you guys. All the subscribers out there, all the people who watch my content, thank you again. I couldn't be here without you. Um, so again i can't describe it in words it's it, it's it's just amazing to me so thank you for the final time again for getting me to this stage um if you have friends or ocean liner enthusiasts or people who just like ships please show them my channel uh, we are now trying of course to reach the 800 subscribers and i know we can do it together my friends um so with that out of the way guys thank you all so much once again for getting me up to this far this voyage to this point has been amazing and let's hope that this voyage shall not end for a very long time so my friends stay safe out there stay happy and thank you very much once again i wish you all good day or night wherever you are and uh, we'll see each other on the next one goodbye Follow old shipping lines on social media. Thanks for watching.